You know, I thought by going to the midnight showing of Despicable Me 4 that I would be able to evade most children. I was sorely mistaken. Alrighty, people, we've got Despicable Me 4, the latest installment in the beloved animated franchise from Illumination. But before I jump into this review of this new sequel, if you love movies and you love movie reviews in particular, definitely consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't done so already. Plenty more reviews and fun movie content headed your way, so thank you in advance if you do happen to subscribe. Now, Despicable Me 4 catches us up with Gru and his new family. He's welcomed a new baby boy into the world, Gru Jr. Things are going well. He's enjoying family life and he's working for the Anti-Villain League, I think that's the name of it, where he's capturing, you know, all the most infamous villains out there. But things don't stay happy for long because he's got a new villain to face, and that is a new villain named Maxime, who's voiced here by Will Ferrell, and his girlfriend Valentina, who's voiced by Sofia Vergara, and he's got to go into hiding with his family, but also take down his foe in the process. Yeah, and then you got your new Despicable Me movie with, of course, the minions. Now, I'm going to preface this review with stating that I am not this movie's target demographic. I am fully aware of that. You know, I am <laughs> also not the biggest fan of this franchise in general. I just, it's not really my thing. So I'm just going to preface this review with that as we delve into it here, because I know there's fans of the franchise who probably just want to know if they're going to enjoy this movie. And I think if you are a fan of the Despicable Me franchise, this movie does offer more of the same, and I think you're going to enjoy yourselves. Now, what did I think of Despicable Me for? Do I think it's the best in the franchise? Do I think that this franchise still has much life left in it? No. <laughs> I just find this whole series to be just very standard, very serviceable, and I just I just I just don't find any of these movies to be very spectacular in any way, shape, or form. But hey, that's just me, and I know that I am <laughs> probably in the minority when it comes to these movies. They all have their varying degrees of entertainment value, but as a whole, I just think this franchise could be a whole lot better because the concept at its center is pretty novel and very unique, and you've got an amazing voice cast, and we've attracted a lot of great voice talents to this franchise. I just, we could do a lot better. That's just all I'm saying. We could do a lot better. Let's strive for better. But that's not to say that there's nothing in this movie that I enjoyed. There are some things that I do think still work in this franchise, some things I think that work in the sequel, so let's talk about that. Now, first and foremost, the voice cast is fantastic in the movie. I mean, Steve Carell has shown no signs of stopping his enjoyment of playing this character. You hear the that infectious energy in his voice. You can tell how much he's enjoying playing and voicing this character. And this movie's no exception. I think he's just a blast to hear as Gru, and I think he just really adds a lot to this franchise, and he definitely keeps it chugging along on his shoulders. And the rest of the voice cast is really strong here, too. I mean, Kristen Wiig remains great. I think Will Ferrell is a great new addition as the villain. Again, he's having the time of his life as this villain who is half human, half cockroach. <laughs> so, yeah, you gotta get Will Ferrell to play that, right? And I also think the animation has come a long way since that first film. I think the animation is much more detailed and nuanced. And I think that there's just a lot more going on and a lot more creativity being shown in the animation, which I really enjoyed. It was great to see that evolution as this franchise has gone on. And there are some moments where I chuckled. There are some moments that got me. I did enjoy the new dynamic between Gru and his son. You know, his, his son doesn't seem to be the biggest fan of him at the beginning of the film, but obviously you know where that storyline is going ahead, where that arc is going ahead. But I do think that the movie does a good job earning that resolution, earning that evolution, and I enjoyed <laughs> their dynamic. I think that's a lot of fun. And some of the new characters are fun, like Poppy, who's voiced here by Joey King. I think that she's a fun new addition to the cast as kind of this, like, villain protege that wants, you know, Gru's help and trying to get into this villainous school that he went to. But at the end of the day, it's just a very mediocre movie and a very mediocre sequel. It just feels like this franchise is in just cruise control at this point, where it knows what fans want. It doesn't want to do anything more. It doesn't want to do anything less. It's just just kind of on autopilot. And that's just really a bummer because I really do think this franchise could be a lot more than it is right now. There are shades of a much more mature, much funnier franchise. I mean, there are little visual gags in this movie that I actually think are really funny and really smart and clever, but the rest of the movie is just really going for like the lowest you know, the bar when it comes to the humor, especially when it comes to the minions, which this is going to be a hot take. So <sighs> I think the minions are really fucking annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know so many people love them and they're like so beloved and they're like a phenomenon. And I understand why. I understand why kids love the minions and their whole shtick, but oh my God, I cannot stand them. And this movie, they don't do anything to win me over. Let's put it that way. But there are moments in this movie where there's some darker humor, where there's some smarter 
humor that I wish that the movie leaned into a little bit more because you can have an animated kids film that can work for kids and adults. We've seen it time and time and time again before, and I really do feel like this movie could have walked that line, but instead it decided to really just kind of gear itself towards kids. And look, that's fine because at the end of the day, this movie's gonna make so much money. Kids are gonna love it. I mean, my audience that I saw it with, it was a pretty packed theater for a midnight show, which is pretty impressive. And there were even applause breaks. So I know that this movie's gonna do well. I know that fans of the franchise are gonna really enjoy it. Uh, I just wish that this movie tried to kind of gain a wider audience and, you know, also entertain the parents and not just the kids. Let's put it that way. I mean, the storytelling is just really uninteresting and cliche. A lot of the characters are just boring. I think Gru's other kids are really sidelined in this movie. They have very little to do. Same goes for his wife, who's voiced by Kristen Wiig. She doesn't really have much to do in this movie at all. And most of the movie I just found to be very boring and uninteresting. It's a movie that's an only an hour and a half, and yet it felt like three hours to me. It's just, it's such a boring experience in my mind. It just, it just, nothing of this movie wows me. And it just, I've seen so many better animated films. And I just feel like this franchise is in desperate need of an evolution in terms of its storytelling, in terms of its humor and its characters. It just, there's a lot of room for improvement here. But anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox here and I'm going to just give you my rating of the movie. And in the end, I'm gonna give Despicable Me for, again, definitely not my kind of franchise, definitely not a movie for me particularly. So in the end, I'm gonna give Despicable Me for, I'm gonna give this movie two out of five stars. It's a serviceable, somewhat entertaining sequel, but I'm just not a huge fan of this franchise. I think it could be a lot better than it is, like I said. And I know this movie isn't for me at the end of the day, and I know fans of the franchise will enjoy it, but for me, just not my cup of tea, unfortunately. So that is my review of Despicable Me 4. Really hope you enjoyed it. Really hope you take it into consideration if you're thinking about seeing this one or not. And if you have seen the movie, let me know in the comments section below if you loved it, hated it, thought it was okay, think this franchise needs an evolution. Let me know in the comments section below. Definitely curious to hear your thoughts. Have an awesome 4th of July weekend and make sure to follow my film podcast, Film on Tap, where every other week I get together with my buds. We talk about movie news, trailers, we review movies. We go on some weird, wild, hilarious tangents. It's so much fun. Links to that in the description as well. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.